Okay, we're going to pick back uh, up where we left off in the last video. Um, we were looking at exponential equations. This particular exponential equation is a little different because it has kind of a quadratic form. I'll put that in quotes here. The quadratic form in that it looks like a quadratic equation, but it's not. It's an exponential equation. It has that form. See, e to the 2x is e to the x squared minus 5 times e to the x to the first minus 14 equals 0. So I'm going to see if I can solve this like a quadratic, at least start off by solving it like a quadratic, to see if it factors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if this will factor in a couple of binomials. So I would get e to the x and e to the x. I need two numbers whose product is negative 14, whose sum is negative 5. I'm thinking minus 7 and plus 1. I'm going to set e to the x minus 7 equal to 0. I'm going to set e to the x plus 1 uh, equal to 0. Here I'll add 7 to both sides. And I'll take the natural log of both sides. And the natural log base e of e to the x is x equals the natural log of 7. There's one solution that I can check by plugging back in. Over here, if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get e to the x is equal to negative 1. And stop and think about this. This can't happen. A positive number, about 2.71, uh, to a, a power it can't be negative, so this can't be true. So we only have one solution. Be careful if you kind of start checking your work on these problems with x, x uh, excuse me, with exponential expressions and now logarithmic expressions. That's what we're going to look at next, because sometimes, based on the definitions of logarithms and, and exponential functions, you may get a value that doesn't make sense. Like in this case, getting this. A logarithmic equation is an equation that contains a variable in the logarithm. So that kind of makes sense. Although they always tell you don't make, uh, use it, uh, create a definition of something that uses the terms of, the, uh, of what you're trying to define. Uh, we're going to use this property, which sometimes is called the fourth law of logarithm, the equivalence property of logarithmic expressions. If bx and y are positive real numbers, b not equal to 1, then if log base b of x is equal to log base b of y, this is true, if and only if x is y. So x and y have to be positive numbers because you can't take the log of a negative number, or a zero for that fact. So I'm going to see if I can use this property on these examples that are coming up here. The first example, right away I, I'm in good shape here, look what I have. I have two base two logarithms. So I can go right to this property back here, this equivalence property of logarithmic expression, and I can set 7x minus 4 equal to 2x plus 1. Well, that's a simple equation to solve. I'll subtract 2x from both sides. I'll add 4 to both sides. And I'll divide by 5. And I get x equals 1. Now, here's where it says check up here. You should check this. Because if you take 1 and plug 1 back in and it makes this expression negative, that's no good. So my check would be the log base 2 of 7 times 1 minus 4. Does that equal the log base 2 of 2 times 1 plus 1? So this is the log base 2 of 7 minus 4. This is the log base 2 of 2 plus 1. This is the log base 2 of 3 is equal to the log base 2 of 3. This checks out just fine. And this is a good answer. So notice here, because this problem was so nicely set up, all I had to do was apply this property. I could get an equation much simpler to solve. And I don't have quite that nice a setup here. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I've done it for about the third time today. I think I have forgotten to circle that because I believe this one is right off the, uh, the review. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to, now everything's a, a natural log. That part's good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my properties or my laws of logarithms to rewrite this as the natural log of x divided by x plus 9 is equal to the natural log of 5. Because by writing it that way, by using that property on quotients and rewriting it in this form, I have log of something equals log of something, same base log, natural logs. That means this expression has to equal this expression. And now I can solve that. I can put 5 over 1 and cross multiply. I have 5x plus 45 is equal to x. I have uh, subtract, uh, well, we could subtract 
uh, 5x from both sides. And I have 45 is equal to negative 4x. And if I divide both sides by negative 4, I have x equals 40 fifths divided by 45 divided by negative 4. Here I put the negative out in front, and I have this expression. Now here again is where you should check it, because look what happens right off the bat. I only have this one possible answer, and if I plug it in there, I'm taking the natural log of a negative number, and that can't happen. So this is no good, and actually my solution set is empty. So be sure to check your answers, even if you're just checking them, kind of running through the stuff in your head. Check your answers. Now, these two equations, we were able to use this property. But there are some when we can't conveniently match uh, the sides of the log of A equals the log of B or something like that. So in that case, we're going to go about this route by solving logarithmic equations using exponential form. Isolate the logarithms on one side. See how I had the two logarithms here, and I did some uh, law of logarithm work? Well, that's what we would do next, because then we would use the law of logarithms to write the equation so that we get a single logarithm. Probably not that simple, but a single logarithm. Then we're going to convert that form, logarithmic form, into exponential form and solve that, and of course we're going to check our work. So, I wanted to show you a couple of these examples. So, again, please, I beg your patience here while I clean some of this off, and we'll try an example or two or three. All right, the first one up that I'm going to try, the directions are going to say solve. And this is A here, and it's going to be 3 log base 2 of the quantity x plus 18 is equal to 12. Now, this is a good one for two reasons. It's different than the other ones, and this is one right off the review. I'm going to be using this guy right here. Now, it says here, when you have this type, notice it's not log equals log, so I can't set the expressions equal. But what I can do is I can isolate this expression here. Now, there's only the one logarithmic expression, so to isolate it, I'll divide by 3. So I'll divide both sides, of course, by 3 to keep it balanced. And I have log base 2 of x plus 18 is equal to 4. So I have this kind of in this form. Now, I notice know that this expression is a little more complicated than just x, but I have a single logarithm set equal to a constant, so I am going to rewrite this into exponential form. Remember, you bring the base over and it nudges it right up. I get x plus 18 is equal to 2 to the fourth. I have x plus 18 is equal to 16. Subtract 18, I have x is negative 2. Now again, check your work, important, plug negative 2 back in, if I plug negative 2 in here, plus 18, notice it is not going to give me the logarithm of a negative number. And I can go through the steps, but this is going to work out just fine. Always make sure that your solution does not give you the logarithm of a, uh, of a non-positive uh, non -positive real number. Now let's try another one here. If I can find it here, let's say b, the log of t minus 18 is equal to 1.4. Now in this case, this isn't, this isn't any more complicated than the one I just did. In fact, I don't even have to divide by 3. But I, it doesn't come out quite as conveniently with all these integers, because I have a decimal thrown over here. But I have the log of an, of an expression equal to a constant, so I'm going to convert this step 2 uh, into uh, exponential form. And um, this is base 10, so I'm going to write this as t minus 18 is equal to 10 to the 1.4. Now, I don't know what um, necessarily uh, 10 to the 1.4 power is. I'm sure I can get a calculator and figure that out, but in this case, I don't think I'm going to really need to. I'm just going to write an exact answer. I'm going to add 18 to both sides. And I get t is equal to 10 to the 1.4 plus 18. Now, that seems a little complicated, but that is an exact value. And if you take this expression, and substitute it in there, you can see the 18s would cancel out, and I'd have a base 10 logarithm of 10 to the 1.4. This is going to check out just fine. Now, they get a little more complicated than that, but so far, so good. 